Hello everyone, it's Sandra and welcome to today's video. It is that wonderful time of the year again, the Sephora holiday VIB sale. And for the last couple of years, I've had this tradition where for the Sephora holiday VIB sale, rather than just giving you a long, long list of all the products that I love that you can buy at Sephora, I just really narrow it down to the top 10 products that I found this year that you can get at Sephora that I think are worth checking out in the sale if you are in the market for anything like that. I'm also going to share with you what is in my cart. I love knowing what is in people's Sephora carts. So that's like my favorite thing about the sale because let's be honest, unless you're VIB Rouge, the discount, the Sephora reward system just isn't that great. We're here for the nostalgia. We're here for the tradition it's been it's been this thing that's been kind of holding the beauty community together for so long i don't have any skincare not to say that skincare at sephora is not great sephora carries so many great brands skincare is also super super personal we all have different skin types different skin concerns i think if you have skincare products that you love and that you're seeing results from it's important to stay consistent with those products without further ado let's dive in to my top 10 Sephora Discoveries Recommendations 2022. This is the Makeup Forever HD Skin Foundation. This launched this year and is this my favorite foundation of the year? Pretty, pretty much. This pretty much is the best complexion product that I bought this year. It just delivers. I'm wearing it today. I am trying to wear you know, most of the products that I'm talking about so you can kind of see them in action. You've seen me wear this throughout the year. I think if you have combination oily skin and you're looking for something that that just wears super, super nicely on the skin, satin finish, just looks like your skin, but better, this is a great product to try. Even if you have normal skin, I think this is great. I think if your skin is very dry, very dehydrated, this might not be the one for you but it just wears so, so beautifully and it just sits really nicely on the skin. It doesn't really look like makeup. It doesn't feel heavy or anything. I use this in the shade 1N14, which is a pretty decent color match for me. It does lean a little bit yellow, even though it's supposed to be neutral. I'm definitely able to make it work. This is a light to medium coverage foundation. You can build it up to like a solid medium. I think with this particular product, it shines. Like you get the best results with it when you kind of keep things towards the light to medium end of the coverage spectrum, one to two pumps, spread it all over evenly with fingers and then blend it out with a beauty blender and then chef's kiss. The next product is an under eye powder that I recently talked about in my last makeup tutorial video. And this is another product that I've discovered this year thanks to Melissa Herkman. She did a video on Instagram just talking about some of her favorite powders that she likes to use on her clients. She's a professional makeup artist. And then another professional makeup artist that I follow and that I like, Andrea Ali, also uses this powder. And it's the Givenchy Prism Libre Powder in shade number three, Voile Rose. And this powder is not a new product. This powder has been in the Givenchy beauty range for years, but they recently expanded the shade range. As you can see here, there are four separate compartments. It's a loose powder with four separate compartments and this powder is supposed to also have some color correcting capabilities and now they have a whole bunch of shades available and depending on your skin tone, each colorway can kind of do different things. And this particular colorway, shade number three, is a really nice under eye setting powder, under eye brightening powder for light to medium skin tones. It can help neutralize any discoloration under the eyes and the powder isn't totally, totally matte. It has very, very fine light reflecting particles in it, kind of similar to the um, Laura Mercier under eye powder. Not quite, uh, like I feel like the, the shimmer and the Laura Mercier under eye powder are a bit more, a bit more chunky. This is a bit more finely milled than the Laura Mercier but um, it's it's the same idea. It does have a fragrance to it, which can be a turnoff for some. It's not a particularly strong fragrance, like I don't smell it when I'm setting my under eyes, but it is kind of unnecessary, and if you are somebody that is very sensitive to fragrance, you might want to skip this powder. This particular colorway performs so well under the eyes. This has become a new Holy Grail under eye powder. Before this, my Holy Grail under eye powder was the Pat McGrath, which is still a fantastic under eye powder. I would recommend if, you know, 
the fragrance in this one is a deal deal breaker or if the packaging of this is just too clunky and you want something a little bit more delicate check out the pat mcgrath it's still a great powder but uh, yeah this is an undry powder that i discovered this year that you can get at sephora that has just been my number one i usually just apply it with like a small brush this is the wayne goss airbrush this is my go-to brush to apply this powder under the eyes but any small brush will do in a pinch. If you want like a more intense brightening effect, you can also kind of bake with this powder or use like a powder puff. I personally don't love to bake the under eye area. I just find that it kind of exurbates my texture and fine lines. But if you don't have too much texture, too many fine lines, and you want that like super, super glam finish, you can bake with this powder under the eyes as well. And I will link Melissa Herkman's Instagram video in the description box because she shows how she uses this powder and she uses it to bake too. Another powder that I've discovered that I am super, super impressed with, loving so much is the Westman Atelier Vital Skin Pressed Powder. This is a talc-free pressed powder. It also claims to have some skincare benefits in it. This is just a super, super lightweight, setting powder. It doesn't have oil control or anything. So for me personally, I have combination oily skin, but in the fall and winter, I'm a lot less oily. So for me, this is a great fall and winter powder that I can just use all over my face to set my makeup in place. And it just softly, softly sets the face, softly blurs without looking like powder. So this is a great powder if you hate the look of powder, but you need to use powder in order to set your makeup. I have the shade Creme because I mainly use this as like an all over setting powder, but this also works really nicely under my eyes in a pinch. From one powder product to another, my next recommendation is this powder blush from Pat McGrath. This is the Pat McGrath powder blush in the shade Flirtatious. This has been one of my favorite makeup discoveries of the year, and this has quickly become one of my holy grail blushes. It's a really gorgeous muted mauvey pink, and the texture is incredible. It's so, so easy to blend. I am wearing it today. Um, it's, it's beautiful, so easy to work with, really, really flattering, not powdery, not chalky. It's such a great blush formula. And there are different finishes in this formula. This particular blush has like a, almost like a demi matte finish. It's, it's just very, very skin-like, very refined. The next cheek product that I discovered this year that I am super, super smitten with is the Makeup by Mario what is this called? I always forget the full name. Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer in the shade Light Medium. This launched in the summertime. I bought it shortly after it launched and I have been using it ever since. Again, this formula has several different shades to choose from. I really like the shade Light Medium because it is the perfect neutral. And it's just such a good shade if you are somebody with a light to medium skin tone. It sculpts a little bit, but also adds a little bit of warmth, but not too much warmth. It, for me, this color is like the perfect bronzing slash contrast contour hybrid, but it's really sheer. It's really buildable. It's so, so easy to work with. It's really, really foolproof. You just get your favorite buffing brush and you go to town. It's easy to blend and it's the perfect everyday product because you don't really have to, to think about it too much. You can just kind of slap it on and go. The texture is really interesting. It's super balmy. It has like a slight dewy finish on the skin, but it doesn't feel heavy or greasy. I don't have issues with this fading or making me more oily or making me break out throughout the day. Absolutely love this. This is a top-notch product. I have recommended it to many of you already, but if you're in the market for something now, definitely check this out. It is so, so good. My next recommendation is the Tower 28 Make Waves Mascara. I feel like I am a broken record about this. I have been raving about it ever since I tried it, and it is one of the best mascaras that I've ever used, especially in terms of an everyday mascara. It has, it's my new favorite everyday mascara. It does everything I want an everyday mascara to do. The perfect balance of length, separation, a little bit of volume. It holds my curl well. It lasts really nicely throughout the day. I absolutely love it. It's um, it's it's just it's such a winner, such a winner. It has a curved applicator. It has plastic bristles. It's easy to remove at night. It does it doesn't irritate my eyes or anything. It's fantastic. I do have another mascara that I've discovered this year that I also love. 
which is going to be an honorable mention. This is the Kelly Ray Come Hell or High Water Mascara. This is more of a, um, this has even more lasting power. If it's super hot outside, super humid, I do get a little bit of um, smudging after a long day with the Tower 28 mascara, but this mascara is like bulletproof. I would just kind of rotate between the two. This would be my everyday mascara for hot weather, vacation, for summertime, and this would be my everyday go-to mascara for the other times of the year. This mascara is a little bit more difficult to remove, but it still is relatively easy to remove. This is more of like a traditional tubing mascara. You definitely need warm water and like a gel-based cleanser, and then it will come off your eyelashes and tubes. The brush is more of a traditional bristle brush. Again, holds a curl like a dream. This gives a little bit more volume, but less length and separation as opposed to the Tarte 28, but they're both fantastic mascaras that I've discovered this year and that I would repurchase over and over and over again. The next product is a fragrance and I did a video all about my favorite fall fragrances this year. So if you want more fragrance recommendations, definitely check out that video. I'm going to link it on the screen and uh, in the description box below. But one really delicious fragrance recommendation I have to make, especially if you're into woodsy, sexy, more traditionally like masculine leaning scents for, for fall and winter, this Ellis Brooklyn Apre perfume is so good. This just smells like skiing on the slopes in Switzerland and then you're in the chalet and you're just sipping a nice like bourbon by the fire at the end. It's a delicious woody scent. It's very refreshing, very, very sexy. If you like De Los Santos from Byredo or Santal 33 from Le Labo, definitely check this out. I think you would also really like it. This is what I like to refer to as a sexy lumberjack scent. A lot of wood notes, but it's also really fresh and it's really cool and it's very unique. Definitely wanted to put this on your radar if you are into more woodsy scents. And the best part is you can get the travel size at Sephora. The little travel roller balls of fragrance at Sephora have been one of my favorite things to buy for like the last 10 years that I've been shopping at Sephora. They've always done them and I always recommend getting one as a nice little treat to switch up your fragrance for a new season. So Ellis Brooklyn Apre gets a big, big thumbs up from me. This thing, this is a powder puff and it's from Beauty Blender and it is so good. I have really, really rediscovered the magic of a powder puff this year and especially for my fellow oily combination skin friends out there, a powder puff with a loose powder and then just pressing the powder into the skin it will give you a much, much better result. It will help with oil control. You know, if you have larger pores, it will help smooth out the look of your pores. And it just does a much better job at setting the makeup than a brush. I'm fully back on the powder puff bandwagon this year. And this is a really, really good one. I love the shape. It has the slot inside. So you just put your finger in there and then you can get into the corners if you want to set your under eyes. You can go all over the face. This is great for touch-ups as well. And it washes well. I just wash it after every time I use it. I wash it just with a bar soap. Every evening, I leave it out to air dry. And then in the morning, it's nice and fresh and clean and ready to go again. The next recommendation is the lipstick that I'm wearing today. And it's the Merit Signature Lipstick in the shade Cabo. This is such a gorgeous warm red. I love the formula. It's very, very thin, very lightweight. And I think it's nice to have a red in this formula because it's, it's like a non-committal red. You can be as intense as you want. You can get a really full-on application, especially if you wear this with a red lip liner, or you can do it like I, I'm doing it today. I'm just wearing it with a nude lip liner. I paired it with Jouer Fawn lip liner, which is more like a more of like a brownish tone. And then instead of just building this up in layers, I'm just dabbing it on all over the lips and slowly, slowly, slowly building up the color just, just slightly so that it's, it's like a more lived in soft, 
soft red, but it's it's not like a full on in your face red. I can always blot it off, add like a nude lip gloss on top and I can change my lip color if I'm not feeling red for the rest of the day. So it's a great like introductory red. Um, it's beautiful. So if you like warm reds, definitely check this out. This is like the lighter weight version of Lisa Eldridge Dragon. So if you like Dragon, but you want like a more chilled out version of it, check out Merit Cabo. I have another lipstick that I discovered this year that I got at Sephora, but this particular color I wouldn't really recommend right now because this is more of like a spring summer shade. But this lipstick formula in general is like chef's kiss and it's the newly reformulated Dior Addict lipstick formula. I have this in the shade Mimi Rose, which is a beautiful, beautiful coral color. I love this lipstick formula so much. It smells so delicious. It smells like raspberry candy. And they have a lot of really stunning colors. I really, really want to get more colors in this formula because it's so good. This formula and the Chantecaille Lip Chic formulas are so, so good and they're quite similar. So if you like the Chantecaille Lip Chics or the Surat Lip Sleeks, this is um, the same, like a similar type of formula, just beautiful shiny finish, really, really buildable, easy to wear, and just a joy to wear. So if you like your pinky corals, the shade Mimi Rose will be perfect for you. It's, it's a gorgeous color. And like I said, they have so many beautiful shades to choose from in this formula. And uh, it's definitely one of my favorite lip formulas that I have discovered for 2022. So this is another honorable mention. And then the last recommendation that I have, and this is also something that is going to be in my cart because I ran out and I need to repurchase this ASAP. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Setting Spray. This is one of the best setting sprays I have ever used. It smells really good. It's like a fruity, has like a fruity fragrance. And I love it because it sets my makeup without drying it out. There isn't any alcohol in there. I don't feel like moisture is being sucked out of my face as soon as I put this on. It is a fantastic setting spray. And this is the mini version. They do have a larger bottle, which I am planning on buying, but I kept the mini so that I, you know, if I'm traveling, I can easily unscrew the top and then refill it with some fluid from the bigger bottle and I can have a little travel size on the go as well. Can't say enough good things about this setting spray. I love it, 10 out of 10. They also have a uh, mini set with two. One of them is in the traditional like fruity fragrance and one of them is in a different fragrance. So looks like they have a limited edition scent variation for the holidays. I think I'm just personally going to buy the large like just like the large bottle and the OG scent. I feel like if I get the, the mini set, I will have two more mini bottles of this. And it just feels like kind of like a waste of packaging since I already have one mini bottle. The next product that's in my Sephora cart is something that has been in my Sephora cart for like two years probably. And jokes on me because the price of this product keeps going up and I'm still not buying it. And every time the price goes up, I get more angry but I still kind of want it. And it's Tom Ford Lost Cherry Fragrance. It's really funny because when this fragrance first launched, I hated it. I didn't like it. I'm not really a gourmand lover. For some reason, it grew on me. And then now every time I, I spray it, I have a tester, I spray it, a little sample of it or whatever, I fall more in love with it and now I really want it. It's been like a slow burn. I went from hating it to really loving it and wanting it, but it's $390. I could have sworn those bottles were $175. I didn't realize that some of them are way more than that. Some of them are 200, some of them are 250. And then for some reason, Lost Cherry is more than all the other ones. It's $390 for the 50 milliliter bottle, which I find just horrifying to be honest. It's not a fragrance that has a long lasting power either. So I, I would be going through it really quickly. So that's kind of how I end up talking myself out of it every year. If anybody works at the Estee Lauder companies and would like to get me <laughs> Dom Ford Lash Cherry with your discount, please DM me <laughs> because I know that your discount is a lot better than the Sephora VIB 15% that I'm gonna get. The next fragrance that I'm very interested in is uh, Jo Malone Vetiver Golden Vanilla. 
This is definitely, definitely enabled by my friend on here, State of Kate. She recently got a sample of it and she's been raving about it. And her and I tend to love a lot of the same fragrances. I trust her taste and her recommendations. It just sounds really good. I love vetiver. So it's supposed to be like a nice, like fresh woody vanilla, not like a typical sweet floral or gourmand vanilla. So that just really intrigues me. And you know what? It's been a while since I've perused a Jo Malone counter. So I'm going to uh, check out the fragrance in person. If I like the way it smells on me, I'm definitely planning on picking up a small bottle of it in the Sephora sale. The next fragrance uh, product that I'm interested in is um, another like a discovery set from a brand and it's from Commodity. Commodity is a fragrance brand that um, they've been around for a few years. Then they kind of went, I don't know what happened. They were missing for a couple of years and it looks like now they're back. Shifted things around a bit and I really like what they're doing. And I don't think I've ever smelled a commodity fragrance before, but I know that a lot of people love them. So I'm interested in maybe getting a sample set. The next stuff on my wish list is um, kind of boring. I'm getting another Kosas Airbrow. This is my favorite brow gel. I use this in the shade Soft Brown, and this is like a holy grail product for me. So I usually buy one every time Sephora has a sale. I'm also interested in a new eyeshadow primer. I'm almost out of eyeshadow primer, and right now I'm using the NARS one, and I'll, I'll be honest, I don't love it. I used to use the um, Urban Decay Primer Potion. That was like my ride or die for years, but I just felt like switching it up, so I tried the NARS, but this doesn't really do much in terms of crease prevention. So if you were a diehard Urban Decay Primer Potion fan, and especially if the NARS eyeshadow base doesn't work for you, did you find something else? Do you have something else that you could recommend? Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I'm probably just gonna repurchase the Urban Decay. I'm also very tempted by the Tom Ford Smoky Quartz Quad. Now, I anti-hauled this quad when it first launched. This is one of the cream eyeshadow quads from Tom Ford, and I am glad that I anti-hauled it because it just gave me time to really digest and to really figure out if this would be something that I would reach for a lot in my, in my collection. And the formula, I'm just very intrigued by. It sounds like it sounds like the perfect eyeshadow quad for me. It sounds like it would be something that I reach for constantly. One of the people that I love to follow who really, really is tempting me and is really enabling me to get this Tom Ford Smoky Quartz quad is uh, Tanya B. Wells. I don't know if you're subscribed to her, her channel, but if you're not, you really should. I love her content. She reviews a lot of high-end makeup. Her and I have a lot of similar tastes and uh, we wear similar shades. And she keeps talking about how much she loves the Tom Ford Smoky Quartz. It looks amazing on her. I might bite the bullet and get it, but do I need more neutral eyeshadow in my life? The answer is no, my friends. I do not need more neutral eyeshadow in my life. I definitely don't, but I really, really want it. The next thing that was on my list was the House Labs Foundation, which I've since talked myself out of, so we can cross that one off the list. Another thing that got my attention, but I'm going to talk myself out of it because I don't need it, is the Charlotte Tilbury Highlighter Wand Duo. They have like a mini set with two of the, um, the highlighting wands that are super, super famous from Charlotte Tilbury. I still, another product that I've never tried from the brand that I'm, I've am i always been curious about because everybody seems to rave about it. So they have a little mini set for the holidays with two different shades and that would be like a fun way to try that highlighter formula. That's it for me. That's what's in my Sephora cart. Uh, my top 10 recommendations, top 10 things that I discovered this year that you can get at Sephora. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope that you found this helpful. If you have any questions about anything, of course, put them in the comment section below and I will catch up with you on there. And I want to know what's in your Sephora cart, obviously. I'll be chatting with you in the comments. Thank you so, so much for hanging out with me today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.